If you ever needed to test a loop detector with a good load, this is a way for you to make a, a test loop out of a Gatorade can and some extra XLPE wire that you have laying around. I needed to fabricate a couple more test loops. The one that I did have, I actually now have it on a display permanently. And um, I bought uh, this three inch PVC coupling and that's what I planned on doing it around um, and I'll probably still will use this for that. But uh, I noticed that the Gatorade container is about the same shape and same size as this and the Gatorade container is free. So I was gonna try to make one of them out of the Gatorade container and see how it goes. Back in the day, these Gatorade containers used to be like this. They looked like the igloo coolers that they made and this would have been real easy to do. The wiring could actually fit into this pretty easy. But uh, now with it being shaped like this with this concave all the way around the, the circumference of the, uh, the container, I think it's going to be a lot harder to do, but I'm going to scuff the sides up a little bit and drill my holes and, and uh, just use some of this extra 18 gauge XLPE wire to make the loop and the lead uh, and see if this uh, works. So I'm going to put some protective eyewear on and you can see that I've got this uh, little grinding stone set to the on the end of my Dremel. So I'm going to try to scuff the sides up here to possibly help hold the XLPE in place until I get some kind of uh, um, silicone or something on top of it to keep it in place. But uh, we'll go ahead and scuff the sides up see what we get. Yeah, it looks like uh, I just fried my little grinding wheel. I don't think that there's any point in doing that whatsoever. Um, with some sandpaper or something like that to scuff that up, I think that would probably be a better idea. I'm going to go ahead and start doing the wrapping of the wire anyway. I'm going to drill three holes at the top and uh, three holes at the bottom all in line with each other. I'll show you why here in a second. All right, so I got three holes kind of in line with each other. So go ahead and pull out a couple feet of wire and you want to feed it through the top hole like that and then come from the inside this try not to kink the wire so it'll look like that and then now you want to go back inside Again, you don't want to try you don't want to kink the wire and then just pull it through so it'll look like that and this wire the excess a couple feet of excess will be on the inside so now I'm gonna just pull out uh, for mm, three or four feet of this wire and then I'll start wrapping it for our purposes it doesn't matter what direction that you go uh, we can always if we want to energize it one way or the other to simul simulate some kind of phasing uh, we can do that by actually swapping the wires on the on the loop detector. I'll just start wrapping the wire. And you want to keep it as tight as you can. And one of the ways you can keep the container from deforming is to put the lid back on. So I'm just going to wrap it as tight as I can. I probably should have got that a little bit higher, but let's see how this goes. Looks like it's already going to shit. All 
I'm hoping that once I get to the middle, I can push this stuff back up. So let's just try to get as much on here as we can. And now I'll just cut off about, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cut off about three feet uh, from the end of here just to make sure I've got enough. As you can see, the top part is loose up here. So I'm just going to try to feed this, wrap this around to try to get some of that excess slack out. Looks like I might be able to do it. We'll see. Just keep feeding it around. Looks like it might be making a bigger mess. Now that I'm close to the end down here, I'll go ahead and feed it into this other hole. Now this is only going to go through two of these holes. So that's what it looks like. I think I need to uh, tighten this up a little bit more so I'm gonna just push the excess slack down each one each little turn here let's see if I can get actually it doesn't look like it has that much in there but there's a little bit And maybe I should have gone one more time around, but but if you put some uh, silicone on that, that should hold that pretty good and pull that pretty tight. So now with the uh, the wire down here at the bottom, we want to feed it back through. This hole right here. And of course I got this wire looped in there. So now let's Okay, so that's what the wrap part looks like, and if you do a little bit better job than I did, you probably can get that a little bit tighter. So now that you see how that uh, this wire is um, on the outside, that's exactly what we want to do with this wire too. Feed it through the outside okay I don't think that's gonna cause any kind of issue that inside there being like that um, only way we'll know is to measure it and see since I've never done this before so what I'm gonna do is just pull these these wires right here pull these out and then just cut them off And then just take the excess and put it in your drill. And then you can just spin it. And you see how it's kinking up there in the middle? Just release a little bit. And all I'm doing is kinking those wires so they stay together a little bit naturally. You can um, use zip ties to keep them together, but I'll just do this. 
All right, so that's what the almost finished product looks like. And I gotta say, that's actually on there pretty good. I don't wanna test my luck by, by pushing that off of there, but um, you can always tighten it up uh, just by pulling the excess down here and pulling the excess through up here. And that's probably what I should have done when I was trying to work that excess out. I could just actually pull it out through, through up here and get that tight. And um, if you wanted to drill an extra hole here, or I guess technically it'd be two extra holes here and two extra holes here so you could actually lace it through a little bit better uh, to keep it uh, tighter. Um, that's not necessarily a bad idea, especially the way that this thing is, is designed um, to have that concave around the circumference of the container. But this will add a little bit of structure by keeping the lid on there. So let's uh, let's test the inductance and document it on the inside of the container and and see if it gives us between 20 and uh, and 200 is all I need and I'm expecting that this is probably going to be um, in the neighborhood of 50 micro Henry's. So let's see. I say, you know what? I'm going to bet on it. I'm going to say I'm going to say 60 is where I'm going to go. Okay. So let's uh, pull out our LCR and see what we get. Got my Agilent U1731B. Um, it is a LCR. It has a couple different features on there. has a couple different frequencies as well, too. It'll do 120 uh, hertz, and then it'll do also 1K. And uh, I, I realize that this isn't the frequencies that these inductant, inductance loops operate at. Um, but uh, at least it'll give us an idea of what the uh, uh, inductance is on it. So I'll go ahead and uh, I've got it set to 1K. I've got it set to serial. I've got it set to um, uh, Henry's. And let's go ahead and test. I'm not going to worry about being super accurate by compensating for the leads. I just want a, a general reading. Damn it. I was right the first time when I said 50 micro Henry's. All right, so that's about what we want to be. So I'm going to just write that on the inside. And I'm going to write uh, the date, which I believe today is probably around the 20th. And then I'm going to write uh, what the reading was, which is now that it's got a stable reading, I'm going to go ahead and stick with uh, 52. Uh, microfarads or excuse me micro henry's and then i am going to write the frequency that it was tested at okay so in there i've got the date that i made this i've got the uh, reading that i got at this particular frequency so that was pretty easy to do and it cost us nothing in parts to do it only the time to make it so if you want to see how i use this in a demo setup you can click the link right here and if you want to see what it would look like with some silicone on the outside, just in case you are taking this out in the field and you want a little bit more protection on the wire while preventing the wire from move around, moving around, I'll, uh, I'll show you that in, uh, in that link right there. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like it, please uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The one input hooked up from the coil and then I've got the output uh, which is this wire right here hooked up to the play button on this little sampler and um, what I wanted to do was take a look at the voltage uh, over time and how it reacts when this uh, coil has a piece